anatomy of the abdomen. Uh, to start with, uh, I will give you a definition of the abdomen. The abdomen can be defined as the region of the trunk that lies between the diaphragm above and the inlet of the pelvis below. I will discuss inlet of the pelvis in the next slide. What are the boundaries of the abdomen? Superiorly, of course, you know it, the diaphragm. Inferiorly, the pelvic cavity through the pelvic inlet. Anteriorly, thoracic cage, muscles, and fascia. Posteriorly, the lumbar vertebrae. And of course, laterally, the 12th rib, the upper part of the pelvis. This is the picture of the abdomen here. This is, we call it pelvic inlet. This dotted line, pelvic inlet, separates between the abdomen and the pelvis. Can you see here? This is the diaphragm and this is the abdomen. Part of the abdominal cavity is covered by the ribs. Not only the thorax and the ribs, part of the abdominal cavity. Of course, if we want to discuss the anatomy of the abdomen, we start with the abdominal wall. This is topography of the abdominal wall. This is the umbilicus. Here we have muscle, we call it rectus abdominis muscle. Here, external oblique. This is the region of inguinal ligament. Of course, we will discuss all of them in next slides. This is lateral view, showing you the dermatomes of the skin. The nerve coming from the spinal cord and distributed here to the lateral and anterior abdominal wall. I want to remind you about a few points. The umbilicus received the nerve T10, I mean thoracic nerve number 10, while xiphoid the process T7 and the pubic region L1, I mean lumbar nerve number 1. If we want to describe the abdomen, better to divide it into nine regions by two vertical lines, two vertical lines, and two horizontal lines, and two horizontal lines. These nine regions, they are, this is we call it epigastric region. This is right hypochondrium. If this is right hypochondrium, what do you think this is? It must be left hypochondrium. This is the umbilicus region. Here we call it right lumbar region or lateral region. If it is right, what is this? Of course, it is the left. This is pubic region. Sometimes we call it hypogastric. If this is epigastric, this is hypogastric, or pubic region. What is the name of this? Right iliac or inguinal region. Of course, this will be left iliac or inguinal region. The abdominal region, the abdomen can be divided into nine regions. I discuss it in the picture by four imaginary lines, two vertical lines, extend the front mid-clavicular point superiorly to mid-inguinal inferior and two transverse lines intertubercular and the other subcostal sometime sometime the abdomen divided not only in nine regions in four regions four quadrant right upper quadrant left upper quadrant right lower and left lower What are the structures found in the anterior abdominal wall? Of course, all of you, you know, it is skin, superficial and deep fascia, and then number three, four, and five, they are muscles. Number six, fascia and peritoneum. 
So how many layers they are? They are seven. Skin, superficial and deep fascia. But the three, four, five, they are muscles. And then we continue with fascia transversalis and parietal peritoneum. If you can see this slide, I divided the layers of the anterior abdominal wall into lateral group or lateral side of the abdomen and medial. So, what is the difference? It seems to be that the skin subcutaneous tissue, skin subcutaneous tissue, laterally and medial. Fascia is the same, fascia. Only three, four, five, they are different. Laterally, laterally, there are three muscles, external oblique, internal oblique, and transversus abdominus muscle. They are three muscles. Where are they? They are lateral, in the, arterial, in the abdominal wall. While anterior abdominal wall, medially, we have anterior rectus sheath, rectus muscle and posterior rectus sheath. Can you see the difference? Here, three muscles. While here, sheath, muscle, and sheath. And six and seven, they are the same. I'm not going to discuss these things in detail. I'll show you the picture here. Can you see the colors is different? They are different layers of fascia. Fascia scarpa, extend from the lower abdominal wall, extend around the genitalia. While campus fascia, it is part, they are two of them, they are part of superficial fascia, located lateral here. This is another lateral picture to show you the two layers of the fascia, fascia scarpa. Muscles of the anterior abdominal wall, they are external, internal, transversus, rectus abdominis, and we have small muscle, we call it paramedalis and the free maastricht muscle. Can you see the difference between these three pictures? This is superficial dissection. Only the skin subcutaneous tissue removed. This is intermediate dissection where the external oblique is removed, while here deep dissection where the internal oblique is removed. The first layer, laterally, here you can see it red in color, external oblique muscle. Can you see the direction of the arrows? It's, it's fibers passing downward and medially. While here, below it, we call it internal oblique. The fibers passing upward and medially. While transversus abdominis muscle, passing almost transverse fibers. Another thing, can you see laterally the muscles, they are red in color? While here, they will change into aponeurosis. Even the internal oblique change into aponeurosis, even the transversus abdominus muscle. Of course, I'm not going to discuss the origin insertion, you can read it. But I have a picture here. Here in the lower region, this is external oblique muscle. I told you that medially, it will change into fire, uh, aponeurosis. This aponeurosis will be thickened in the lower end and passing backward from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle here. This structure we call it inguinal ligament. Can you read it here? This is we call it inguinal ligament. The external oblique aponeurosis passing backward forming the inguinal ligament. This is thing. Another thing in this aponeurosis, there is a defect here, triangular in shape. This is we call it superficial inguinal ring. 
or sometimes we call it external environment ring. From this structure, from this opening, from this ring, the structure passing, they are spermatic cord in male and round ligament in female. This is another picture showing you the superficial inguinal ring. And this is the inguinal ligament, and this is the external oblique of aneurysis. Now, internal oblique muscle, of course, the origin insertion. I'm not going to discuss it, you can't read it. Here, here, I want to show you different pictures. This is external oblique muscle. If we remove it, we are going to see internal oblique and the transversus abdominus muscle and then fascia transversalis. This is how the spermatic cord in male passing through the inguinal canal. Of course, I'm going to discuss inguinal canal in the next few pictures. This is how the hernia coming. Now, transversus abdominus muscle. I want 